well, another week and more just flaming dumpster fire coming out of the overlords from Europe, Stellantis. I, I, I'm sorry if I seem like I'm very negative on them because I am. I, I, this this company is terrible for America. They're terrible for cars. They're just terrible, period. Uh, and it is, it, it's getting kind of sad. So the last video I did, I'll put that up there somewhere. It was talking about how they had a lot of brain drain, as they call it. They had five executives leave in the last, oh, I don't know, six months. And well, lo and behold, another executive has left. And this is actually a pretty important one. She is uh, my math, uh, Kia Marthy. My apologies if I get that wrong. She was uh, Stellantis's software business development leader. I, I, I mean, that's a pretty important job. And um, Stellantis said Monday that Kia Marthy's replacement is Christy Campos, who has worked in the company and its predecessor in several business development and financial roles for the two decades. Kia Marthy, 54, is leaving for a new role in the auto sector. So she's fleeing ship, going to a better company. The leadership change also effective immediately. The company spokes, spokesman, Sean Morgan, said, Kia Marthy had been in the senior software role since 2021 and previously was chief information officer for Fiat Chrysler Automobiles Envy. Uh, Christiana has an outstanding track record in business development in Latin America and Taiwan, combined with solid financial background, Morgan said in a statement. She will be based in Michigan report to Eves Bonifant, the company's chief software officer. Kia Marthy is the latest of several recent high-profile Stellantis executives departing, drawing concern among dealers and others. They include Dodge and Ram CEO Tim uh, Kiniscus, retail head Jason Stosudvik, who was only there for two months, Chief Customer Experience Officer Richard uh, Schwarzwald, and North American Jeep boss Jim Morrison. Most recently, Stellantis confirmed the departure of another high-profile software executive, Bertha Rodriguez Hervas, who had overseen the company's artificial intelligence efforts. Both Kiamarthi and Rodriguez Hervas were key presenters last month during a software demonstration of the com company's Chelsea Proving Grounds in Wash uh, Washington County. Stellantis hopes that its fast-growing software division can generate almost $22 billion in annual revenue by 2030. That's pretty impressive thinking, being that you have people fleeing. So Campus has spent both of her career working for Stellantis and his predecessors as the replacement in several financial and business development roles after a merger that was created in Stellantis 21. She headed the company's business develop and synergy office in South America. Uh, since 2020, she served as chief financial officer for two software-related auto firms in Europe, Mobile Drive and Silicon Auto. Both are joint vendors between Stellantis and Foxconn. Hmm. to develop better software for cars. Well, they obviously not doing a very good job because from what I've seen on the software for Stellantis, it's not the greatest. So there's some more brain drain going on. Of course, more good news uh, for Stellantis. Stupid ads. Indiana police knew Durango, Dodge Durango's already sidelined by mass engine failures. Quality is job one. Or 10. Yeah. Uh, broken oil coolers are leading to the dreaded milkshake mix of oil and coolant in the Indiana State Police's new Durango fleet. This is the only vehicle they have left that they can give to police. And not good. Indiana State Troopers are running into widespread issues with their new Dodge Durangos just at one year into their service life. Several of the department's Dodge Durango pursuit vehicles have suffered from defective oil coolers, which allowed engine oil to mix with coolant, leading to catastrophic breakdown, requiring either major repairs or, in some cases, new engines altogether. New engine would probably be a thing because once you get uh, coolant in there, uh, you no longer have lubrication for your bearings, and that's the end of it. 
So the uh, kind of just skip through this. They ordered 519 Durangos from Dodge for a cost of $25 million and took two delivery of 219 of them. So far, 39 damn, have had the oil cooler problems. And um, and some troopers have reported the dreaded chocolate milkshake, the telltale sign of oil and coolant mixing. Either way, the milkshake is one of the most feared symptoms in the world of mechanical failures. Uh, so as they go through here, they, they, they explain that Sergeant uh, Carrie Hulls Tells the symptoms basically start noticing an odor. Yeah, it's a bad one. That doesn't seem right. You see smoke coming out of the tailpipe, and then eventually the car just stops running. It'll ruin the engine. Some state troopers are now resorting to checking the Durangos for signs of bad oil cooler every time they stop for gas. So they mean they attempt to mitigate issues because engine repairs and replacements can take anywhere from four to eight weeks. Wow. Wow. Uh, the ISP did not specifically re- whether this issue only affects models with Durango's Pursuit Standard 3.6 V6, the Pentastar V6, which is a absolute piece of trash, or the available 5.7 liter Hemi. Well, that would be kind of a big thing. Uh, of course, here's where it gets really fun. Um, ISP supervisor Doug Carter says he's reached out to Slantis, but the automaker and parent company of Dodge has failed to give any agency, the agency a timeline to resolve the matter. All right. So let me stop for a second with this article. This is also the same company that knew that the Hemi tick exists and they have known that it has been a problem. Even when they were Fiat Chrysler and got them for free. Well, 4 billion, whatever, basically for free. In 2008, and that Hemi has had that problem since then, and they did nothing to mitigate it. These those engines are time bombs. And here is their quality care right here. These are police officers who buy these vehicles and rely on these vehicles. uh, Most of the time to help you to help citizens, and they are refusing to actually fix the vehicles in a timely manner. Uh, in the meantime, troopers are losing trust in the Durangos and are going so far to label them as a safety risk. Uh, the issue says is anticipating another 40 Durangos to run into oil cooler issues, given the rate of failure of 18%. They've seen up to now possibly resulting in 79 of the 519 being defective. It can be a lot more. This is a company that doesn't care. The fully, if, the ISP notes that the fully equipped model costs $50,000, which seems to indicate the issue is affecting the V8 Durangos. Yes, the Hemi. If so, the agency projects more than 3.9 million of police equipment and that be available for intended use. Your taxpayer dollars at work in Indiana. So, yeah. No, the rest is just blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, there's, there's Stellantis really helping the men in blue. And, oh, yeah, what's going on here? Oh, NHTSA launches recall into 94,000 Jeep Wranglers. And that's all, that's a year's worth of production for Jeep Wranglers. But this only as a loss of motivated power, complaints continue. This affects the 4XE vehicle. You know, the, 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 ins, the insanely stupid hybrid off-road vehicle. Plug-in hybrid. Last time I looked, when you're out in the wild, there's not a electrical outlet in the middle of, you know, the the desert or when you're going wheeling. Um, <clears throat> the National Highway Safety Administration says it opened a recall query on Friday to assess the severity of the alleged defect as well as the effectiveness of the remedy provided in a previous announced recall. So this is a second recall for these vehicles. Back in November 22, NH. TSA announced the recall of nearly 63,000 model year 21 to 23 Jeep Wrangler 4 XE vehicles equipped with the plug-in hydri- plug-in hy- hybrid electric vehicle engine. At that time, the NHCCSA documents warned that these cars may experience engine shutdown could result in sudden loss of motive of power while driving. It means it stops dead. A calibration software update was provided as a remedy to impact 
to impacted owners, but more complaints still piled up since then. In a recall query summary published this week, the NHTCA Office of Defects Investigation noted that it's identified 68 owners reports allegedly of loss of motor, motor power for Jeep Wranglers, 4XE vehicles, from model year 21, now through 24. So once again, Stellantis not correcting a problem that they know about. This company is amazing. And honestly, this is why I rail against them. You should not buy their products. You should not. Honestly, don't buy these products. This company builds garbage. And they don't care that they build garbage. They they built the he, you know all those Hemi's. They have the, they get the Hemi tick. My friend had a Hemi Challenger, 2014, just turned 100,000 miles, brand new engine, wiped out all the cam bearings, just wiped them out. Just and he wiped out the cam too. Wiped wiped everything out. Just gone. Had a new engine. I wouldn't have done that. I would have just taken my taken the L and gotten bought bought something else because I can't see putting the motor in one of those cars. But this is this is the company that Stellantis is, and it's just it is utterly embarrassing. Of course, let's go to one more fun thing for Stellantis. I just did a search Hornet sales failure. This is the Hornet forum. The thing that pops up, worst car out there. These are people that spent money on these cars. And it's amazing. This thing was that Chrysler spent, I'm um, Chrysler, Stellantis spent millions, millions trying to promote this as the replacement for the Dodge Charger and Challenger with a Super Bowl commercial. And nobody wants them. Nobody wants them. Second, <laughs> this is from Reddit, false, the second slowest selling car in America. Do you realize, I think that more Maseratis get sold than, than Dodge Hornets. I, I, it is just truly amazing how bad, how bad this car, this vehicle is. Nobody wants it. Nobody asks for it. And it's in a in a in um a segment. It's in a segment that has the CRV and the Toyota Rav4, both of which sell massive amounts of them because they're incredibly reliable vehicles who know their purpose. Their purpose are to help transport, you know, people's stuff and kids, you know, in a smaller SUV type of thing. It's not a performance car, it's not a race car. I mean, those are mainly geared toward women because that's the, the decision maker in that type of vehicle. Smart marketing. This this uh Hornet, it has no market, it has no target audience. The people that buy that are buying Hemi Challengers and Chargers are not gonna run out and buy a four cylinder as a small SUV. That's just not gonna happen. But one last thing. Because Ford just doesn't want to be left out of the mix. Ford decides to slap the Capri name on an ugly SUV electric appliance in Europe. Thankfully, not here. In Europe, they are suckers for this because they, you know, this got free money because it's socialism over there. But this is this is what Ford has released as a uh, as a Capri in Europe. And it is just the most hideous. It makes the Mach E look sexy. This is these are the glamour shots. Um, yeah. No plans for a U.S. release, yes, because they don't want to lose sixty thousand dollars a vehicle over here on this thing. This is just an absolute joke. I the car that this is based on, it's based on the um, the uh, Volkswagen MEB platform. Volkswagen is now selling those cars with zero interest, zero of seven for six or seven years. That's how bad, that's how bad things are going. They're giving them away. Literally, you're just paying over time with no interest. When when nominal interest rates are like seven or eight percent minimum, they're giving them away. So they're losing money on the money. This whole EV thing is just an absolute joke. 
and, and Stellantis is our is our leader for absolute comedy at this point. I don't know. So that's just my opinion on this. Boy, I see it as a car guy. Uh, I want to hear your opinion. Uh, comment below. I love comments. I always find them fun. The um, These are some bizarre times right now. I hope things change because I'm tired of cars costing 30, 40% more than they did, you know, six years ago. This is, this is insanity at this point. And it's not, it, it's the pace. is not going any better and there's no way to repair these cars. I mean, if, if, if there weren't any old cars, I wouldn't be able to work on anything. And I, I have good tech, good technology savvy. I know how to use computers and do things of that nature. But even on, even knowing that, working on these vehicles now is a sheer nightmare. Just because assemblies and parts can cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to re repair something that's simple. So this is, this is craziness. And you're all affected. Everyone you know is affected by this. Even if you don't buy an EV, even if you don't want an EV, you are paying for someone else's EV. And, you know, if you're buying a Stellantis, you're now, you know, helping a company that just doesn't care. So I, I just I just don't understand it. I don't understand. It's not Chrysler Corporation anymore. That, that died a long time ago. That died in the 90s. That's dead. It's dead and buried. It doesn't exist anymore. The nameplates are not those cars. They're just shadows of themselves. So, I mean, this, this is just sad at this point. So, once again, thank you for listening to my rant on this. And uh, if you got anything out of this, give a thumbs up. If you uh, want to see actually more car stuff, because I'm doing some fun stuff with a couple of a couple BMWs, a Charger, or a Super B, an Oldsmobile, Toronado. You know, you can subscribe. And as always, you know, thank you very much for watching. If you have a classic car or something cool, make sure you take it out because you'll make someone's day, including your own. I'll catch you down the road.